they're two of the most expensive smartphones U.S. buyers will find. And they're also two of the best smartphones, period. I'm Michael Fisher. Find out which of these is the better fit for you as we put iPhone 7 against Google Pixel on Mr. Mobile. First, let's stick some numbers on these. If you're buying unlocked, the iPhone and Pixel are priced identically. You'll pay $649 for the entry-level smaller size, $769 for entry-level in a larger format, and if you max out everything, you're looking at $869 for the Google Phone and $969 for the Apple One. The Benjamin difference reflects the iPhone's higher capacity option. Now, the top-of-the-line offerings from Google and Apple have really never been more similar. But on the whole, I think the iPhone makes a slightly better case for its price tag. Despite their visual similarity, Apple has an edge in build this generation. There's a more refined fit and finish here than on the Google phone, a more symmetrical, cohesive design, and significantly better speakers to boot. Most importantly, the iPhone has a better water and dust resistance rating. Not that you're necessarily going to swim with your phone, it's really more about being able to use it out in a downpour, or knowing you can accidentally drop it into a pool, or yes, a toilet, without destroying it. And it's fun, too. Underwater video is a great way to spice up your snaps. And on that topic, Snapchat continues to work better on iOS than on Android for some reason. The iPhone doesn't completely run away on hardware. While the subtle clicks and buzzes of its new Taptic engine are really nice, that comes at the cost of the headphone jack, which the Pixel preserves. The Pixel also incorporates a bigger battery with faster charging through a USB-C port, which is quickly becoming the standard, and its screen is a higher resolution panel with more saturation and contrast than the iPhones in both available sizes. At first, I thought that display difference was entirely to thank for what looked like more colorful photos from the Pixel, but no. While the cameras are similar on the spec sheet, the pictures they kick out often differ. Google tends to go heavy on saturation, sometimes even injecting colors that, while pretty, frankly just aren't there in the real world. Meanwhile, the iPhone sticks closer to reality even at the expense of some excitement. The differences really come out more often in low light. Daytime pictures can be damn near identical at points. And if you shoot in automatic mode, the phones have similar thresholds for when they'll kick in HDR. Now, if we toss in the iPhone 7 Plus, there's a whole other camera to account for, a separate sensor with a faux telephoto lens that allows for zoom and depth of field tricks. The Pixel can't match that in either size, so if the camera is your primary focus here, and you don't mind the bigger size, go with the 7 Plus. That only goes for stills, though. Probably the biggest difference here comes down to the camcorder. The iPhone and Pixel take completely different approaches to the problem of camera shake. While Apple's OIS is quite good, the Pixel's picture is more steady than I've ever seen from a phone. If you're doing walk and talk vlogging or shooting video from a moving platform, the Pixel makes it seem at times like you're using a Steadicam. And if your camera hand is getting blown around by an especially violent wind, the Pixel does a better job of bringing the buffeting down there too. Now, it doesn't take too sharp an eye to notice the color difference in this footage. In video, the iPhone does a much better job rendering true-to-life color. It's tough to make the case that the Pixel's superior stabilization completely overcomes that. Where the Pixel gets a chance to shine is in the cloud. I love that a full backup of my camera roll is just a tap away. Now, Apple does this too, but after 5 gigs, you've got to start paying up, while Pixel owners get free, full-res backup of all photos and video. That leads us to software, the biggest consideration when choosing between Apple and Google. Little differences go tit for tat. The iPhone's almost magical noise cancellation on phone calls versus the Pixel's more conventional approach. Android's wide open customization versus Apple's dull static lockdown, etc., etc. Bigger differences seesaw too. Google's AI edge is evident. Even in its nascent form, Google Assistant is already much more useful than Siri is. Where the iPhone pulls ahead is in the day to day details. 
While the Pixel has finally managed to match it in terms of battery life, it seems to have achieved that through aggressive memory management that's led to more app crashes on my Pixel than on my iPhone. And Apple's nationwide retail presence means if your iPhone has a problem you can't fix, you can probably find a store in a nearby city to take it to. Not so for Google, but the Pixel gets points for its virtual approach. It has 24-7 customer service baked right in. That back and forth is kind of exhausting, right? Well, if you can take anything useful from it, it's that no matter which of these you go for, you're going to get a great phone. Okay, that's not too useful. In fact, it sounds like a cop-out, but it's true. As always, the biggest question is which ecosystem you want to belong to. Once you answer that, you're golden. Now, I think the iPhone will hold its resale value better, and on the whole, I think it's just barely the better device. But Apple's lead here is almost entirely in hardware. To me, Google's software seems better positioned for the future of mobile, albeit thanks to a trove of user data that I know gives some people pause. And the Pixel is the best yet showcase of Android's vast capabilities. So if your shopping has narrowed it down for you to these two, pick your platform first. After that, you basically can't miss. And since many of you often ask what I would do, personally, I need a little more boldness in my smartphone design or a little less expenditure. And you can find phones to fit each lifestyle in the Mr. Mobile library. Those videos, of course, are on the YouTube channel, folks. Please remember to subscribe while you're there. And most importantly, thanks for watching. Until next time, stay mobile, my friends.